Hello, I'm Simon Fisherbecker. You probably know me better as Dorian Moldavar from Doctor Who, or the Fat Friar from Harry Potter. And this is Everything Geek Podcast. Just hit the jackpot with the Everything Geek Podcast. Hello, everyone. You're listening to the Everything Geek Podcast. I'm your host, Rory, and joining me is my fellow co-host, Dan. Hello there. And also joining us is very special guest, Eric Lopez, the voice actor for Mike Allen and Morton Man and the Spectacular Spider-Man and Blue Beetle in Young Justice. So how are you, Eric? I'm good. How you doing? I'm fine. Thank you. So Eric, getting right into the questions. My first question is, how did you first decide you wanted to get into voice acting? Uh, well, I always knew I, I've been doing uh, characters and, and impressions since I was a kid. And I always knew that I always like I liked it, you know. I I always preferred to speak as someone else rather than myself because I felt more comfortable that way. But I never knew about voice acting really or much about it until I moved to to Los Angeles in 2001 to do stand up comedy. And I used a lot of my my voices, my voices and my characters in my in my stand up act. And uh, and I literally just fell into it. A, a friend of mine uh, referred me to a class. And I took the class and there was an agent sitting in. And after the sixth week of the class, she she said uh, she set up an audition with her agent. And uh, from there on, I've just been doing voiceover. And I'm really glad because it's such a fun industry to be in. Yeah, definitely. My second question is, had you been a fan of Spider-Man before you got the role on The Spectacular Spider-Man as Mac Allen? Yes, yes. I was a big Spider-Man fan. Uh, I, I, re- I hadn't been, um, I hadn't read a lot of comics because when I started to, to really get into comic books, I, uh, I was way behind in all the Spider-Man titles. So I would pick up a title here and there. And, uh, I, I'm, I also, I'm also an artist, I, an illustrator. I draw a lot too. So I used to draw Spider-Man all the time. Uh, but I was a huge fan of the animated shows, uh, the the animated television shows from the uh, the eighties and the and the and the I think it was the eighties and the seventies and eighties. So yeah, I was definitely a big Spider Man fan. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. My third question is: Did you record with the rest of Spectacular Spider Man cast? If so, who did you get to meet? Uh, yes, I did get to record with uh, the we we all came in um, depending on what the scene was. Or, or how many different scenes we all had together, they would get the actors together and they would put us all in one big uh, sound studio. And I got to, I got to meet pretty much like everybody, like all the big names in, in voiceover and in voice acting. And it was really intimidating at first, but it was really cool because everybody's really nice. Everybody's super nice. To, there's no big egos in, in the voice acting world. I got to meet uh, Phil Lamar, who I was a big fan of from Mad TV. And he was also, I was a big fan of, I, I am a big fan of Samurai Jack, the uh, the animated show. And, and he's he played Samurai Jack on there. And I mean, he's all over the place. He's huge in the animation oh, yeah, uh, world. Oh yeah, definitely. He really yeah, is. And, <laughs> and I, I got to work with Vanessa Marshall. She's great. I got to interview her in an earlier episode of the podcast. Yeah, yeah. She's the one that introduced me to you to your uh, yeah. your show, and yeah, she I was really did. grateful. 
Yeah. yeah, she was. She's awesome. I didn't know that um, she was a, a voice, the voice of Irwin on the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. And I was a big fan of that show at the time. So that was really nice to meet her. I got to work with Kelly Who, which was was pretty. It was, I was starstruck when I got to work with her. She's awesome. She's really nice too. Uh, I actually worked with her on Young Justice as well. So she's That's she's nice. really cool. Yeah, it's really cool. You yeah, definitely got to meet some really nice people then. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, my fourth question is, would you say you're better known for your spectacular Spider-Man role or your Young Justice role? Oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> I, 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 That's such a hard one because they're, I love them both. Yeah, I think <laughs> it's safe to say that they're pro- definitely you, probably your most uh, well-known roles together, but when you're trying to separate them, then it gets tricky. Yeah, I guess I mean I I love my role on on uh, on on the spectacular Spider-Man because I got to play a villain. I mean he he wasn't a villain to begin with. He had, he he went through the process of of being you know a friend of Peter's and and he turned later. So I I kind of like that. I, I like the dynamic of that role, but yeah. um the Blue Beetle role is just there's so much. I, I mean I was in so many episodes and I I got to work with so many different people and. And it was just, it was such a big, the, the Young Justice uh, project was huge. They were always bringing in new people. I got to meet Tim Curry. Uh, nice. It was just, it was huge. It was a huge thing. And I, I it was, uh, it's up there. I mean, that, those two, I can't really pick. I love them both. And they're both <laughs> you know, really special to me. So I, I can't really say, but if I had to say for, for the amount of work, it may be, I guess, Blue Beetle, because he was, he was more of a, you know, he had a, a larger, a larger role in the whole series of the Young Justice. Yeah, definitely. My fifth and final question is, do you have any upcoming voice acting roles or other projects you'd like to talk about? I remember you mentioned uh, via email that you provided a voice for the upcoming Batman Arkham Origins video game. Yeah, that was fun. I play Bird. He's like Bane's main general, his main henchman, and he commands all the uh, underlings. And, uh, and that was a really fun role because in the video game, my character has a, a big fight scene with Batman, so so that should be cool. <laughs> yeah, that is that does sound really cool for sure. Anyway, thank yeah. yeah, thank you very much, Eric, for answering all of my questions, and I'll hand you over to Dan now. Okay, you're welcome. Really cannot wait to fight you in Origins. The game looks awesome. Dude. It looks great, man. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, I'm gonna start off with Molten Man. Uh, did you research and read comics featuring Molten Man to get ready for the role? I did try to do some research. I went on the net. I, I researched. I went to uh, to the Marvel page, and they, there's not much out there on Molten Man. I, I think they kind of picked him out of obscurity. Uh, and Greg Weissman has a he has a tendency to do that to to find some of the most obscure characters and just pick them out because I haven't. I'd, ne- I, I'd never heard of Molten Man, and I've watched a lot of the animated shows, and I've, I've read, you know, a good amount of the comics. But he was huge, I guess, in, like, the early days, like in the 70s. So I wasn't really familiar with him, but I did research his backstory and, and, and what his powers were and what he looked like. And I actually even drew some sketches. I, I, I got my sketchbook and tried to sketch my own version of uh, Molten Man, so yeah, I did. I did some some research. I always like to do research on the characters I'm playing to to see if there's anything that that I can find to maybe kind of bring to the role. <laughs> I was also very interested when I learned that he was gonna come on the show because I also prior to the series I hadn't heard about Molten Man and was really interested that Spider Man also had a fiery enemy from the comics. I was really interested to see how he how they how he looked too because uh, the pic there was only like one or two pictures online of yeah. the old the comic book version so I was really interested to see how um, Sean Galloway the artist who designed yeah. the characters would draw him. Which was your favorite episode of Mark Allen, aka Molten Man? It definitely is the one where the, he gets in the the big fight with Spider Man in the pool hall. I think it's called Subtext uh the the episode it's it's just an all-out battle between molten man and and spider-man and it's kind of it, it's it's kind of sad because you know mark allen was trying to be good you know he was trying to be a better person and he was trying to to get better from from his old life of being a gambler and and just a you know kind of like a, a thug yeah and uh, he was trying to be a better person and 
and then they came to him with that deal where he was going to be the experiment uh, the experimental guinea pig for their new little gadget that they created and and then he turned into molten man and he was just angry so it, it was kind of uneasy watching it because you know i didn't want him and spider-man to fight but i mean he, that's how villains are made you know they're always they're not always bad people who just get worse they're sometimes good people who become bad so I, that was probably my favorite episode of all if there was a third season, would you have preferred to have Molten Man go all good or become vengeful over Peter hurting or dumping Liz and being humiliated by Spike? Because, you know, no, if there was a third season, Norman Osborn could have just come back and revealed to a Mark that actually Peter and Spider are the same guy and Mark could just choose, maybe he could just get back at Peter for doing both basically yeah i guess um i guess i kind of would like molten man to stay in that gray area where he's not completely bad but not completely good either where like he's kind of like he's willing to help if it's for the greater good but if it's just for himself he'll still be bad you know i kind of like that gray area for a character like that so i it it would be cool if they could kind of keep him in there somewhere in the middle where he could kind of do some dirt, kind of like a, a Catwoman type character yeah. where she's always, she's kind of on Batman's side, but then sometimes she's not. It's, I kind of like that, that whole thing, the gray area for those characters. My fourth question would be, which character from the entire Young Justice show did you like other than Blue Beetle? Uh, I really liked Impulse. Cause not, not only because I, I got to work with them, um, I got I, I worked with uh, Jason Marsden, the guy who played uh, Impulse in that yeah. whole season. Uh, we worked like next to each other. We were side by side most of the time because uh, we had a friendship in the show, mm-hmm. and uh, he was just a great character. Like his his quick wit and like his energy. He's just a fun character, even though because like the whole time he's like he's presenting himself as if he's he's this you know fly off the handle type of guy who who doesn't really uh think out you know doesn't think things out very very much but but underneath he's from he's from this terrible alternate future or this this terrible future that happens after blue beetle turns and turns against the human race and helps the reach take over the earth and enslaves humans and and he's from that time so he's a he's a he's has a really dark uh you know uh there's a dark person under there that, that that he doesn't let out that he hides very well and i thought that was really cool for that character it was just really fun you know Indeed. Yeah, yeah i actually really like the whole dark element to some of the young justice characters that seem actually in the beginning they seem very basically like nice and everything's like really really cool but then you just get to the bottom of it and you just see that something's wrong with them yeah yeah. yeah, it was a, it was definitely a, a fun uh, little friendship because like with the, in the show, Blue Beetle and Impulse are always together. He's always keeping an eye on him because he never knows when he's going to turn or who's going to turn him because he, he all he knows is in the future, this guy just ruins everything, just enslaves human beings and, and, uh, and he's trying to keep that from happening. So I thought that was pretty cool. Indeed, yeah. My last question is, if games are made for both Young Justice and a Spider-Man game, and both Blue Beetle is a playable character in the Young Justice game, and Molten Man is a villain boss from the Spider-Man game, which would you be more willing and interested in returning as? Oh, I, uh, I would love to play Molten Man in a video game as a villain. That would be fun. It's always... Good to play. I've played a, a few villains in video games, a few uh, like bad guys, like drug dealers and cartel guys. So that 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 would be fun. I, I think those are always the funnest because you get to go all out. Yeah. You don't have to walk, a, you know, during it. You know, you don't have to walk a narrow path. You can kind of just go crazy with it. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I've heard from uh, several voice actors that actually they really like uh, to play villains because sometimes it, it really allows them to ham up and just go all fun with it and just don't be like constrained by moral rules quote unquote basically uh for the character yeah 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 it seems like it's it's much easier to be a jerk (laughs) in 
be a nice <laughs> guy in these shows, in these projects. Yeah. <laughs> well, it does sound more fun, and I personally totally agree. Just venom's for the win. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much for answering my questions, Mr. Morton Man. Welcome. I will hand the torch back to Mr. Williamson. Okay. So, Eric, thank you very much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure having you on the podcast. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. And hopefully we can have you on the podcast again at some point, especially after Origins comes out and talk about the role of Bird. Real quick, I got a question for you guys. What What are your thoughts on the uh, the announcement of Ben Affleck as the new Batman? Okay, Rory. Done. Well, <laughs> Is this part of the big, oh, um... Yes, it, it is part of the podcast, so might as well discuss it now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Eric basically intro the, into the next topic of the podcast. So, hmm, uh, well, I'm actually not that um, optimistic because there have been many, 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 many people posting and being really negative, really positive, and so on. The problem is that with Ben Affleck, he's an amazing writer and director. As an actor, um, the, the problem is I recently watched Daredevil again. I don't, he doesn't feel like the superhero type. He could be an amazing director and writer because he did win Oscars for that. But when he tries to be yeah. like angry and aggressive in something that Batman has to be brooding and I saw his outburst from Daredevil like a very, very scary like... Uh, foreshadowing for what he could be in Batman and one, yeah. one video maker actually said really nicely he could be amazing we never know like people like to bring up the Heath Ledger argument but Ben Affleck has a, a, uh, yeah. a, quite a couple of movies that really show why he shouldn't be Batman let's say uh, Michael Keaton was also a better Batman in some of the deeper scenes because he was all brooding inside, and he was—he didn't show much. And I'm not sure if Ben Affleck could portray that. I don't want to sound negative, but I, I'm feeling that could really be like a new George Clooney situation. Yeah, yeah, I kind of—I kind of got the same type of idea. I was—I uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm really rooting for him. I don't want it to be bad. I, I love all the comic book movies that come out, and I, oh, I'm always rooting for him. I really wanted Green Lantern to be good, but that yeah. wasn't that good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm hoping he can. Just really just shock everybody and, and really just blow everybody away because <laughs> I want it to be good so bad. And, and I was excited when they announced it. But now I'm like, I kind of got some of the air taken out of it. I'm like, oh, man, and we'll see. <laughs> Rory, what is your opinion on Ben Affleck as Batman? Well, I'm going to say it right away. I haven't seen Daredevil, so... You know, I can't agree or disagree with any arguments made against or with, you know, his inclusion. But it'll be interesting to see. Um, I don't really know what to say. I also think um, if we go discuss comparisons, I know this one isn't actually fantasy related, but with James Bond, after Pierce Brosnan, a really well-known actor, stepped down from the role as Bond, no one wanted to see Daniel Craig as James Bond. I don't think anyone actually would have liked to see Daniel Craig become Bond before he was announced. And then we come to Casino Royale. Everyone is all over Daniel Craig because Bond was amazing. That movie was one of the greatest Bond movies. Um, mm -hmm. And then we get to one of the solace. That was terrible. Even yeah. I would agree with that one. Yeah. Then we have Skyfall. Again, everyone's all over Daniel Craig. I think it's safe to say at this stage, Craig is one of the most popular Bonds of all time. So, no, no, could end up like that. But, yeah, anyway, getting back to Ben Affleck, yeah, I'm not going to judge him too soon. I'm, I'm, I will still watch the movie and I kind of like, I don't mind it just a little bit of negativity or not optimism. But then when I read comments like, oh, I'm not going to go see Man of Steel 2 now, and comments like that, I'm just like, what? Uh, uh. Yeah, I think when people say that, I think it's out of anger. They're going to go see it because if not, if they don't go see it to to try to enjoy it, they'll at least go see it so they can be some of the first to talk trash about it. So. Yeah, Exactly, they'll go to see it and spend money on it just so they can 
uh, go online and troll afterwards all over the internet. Hey, guess what? Ben Affleck sucks. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But basically what some most of those people who say they won't go in there will actually do when the time comes. This Ben Affleck thing could be negative, but see how much attention I mean, my feeds on Facebook and YouTube were overwhelmed by Ben Affleck reactions. I agree. Indeed. And if this is even if the casting is not the best one, because given Hollywood has some amazing potential in terms of male actors. Yeah, it's, it's someone pretty much everyone has heard of. Yeah. You know. This is bringing a lot of buzz because imagine if they just chose an actor everybody has faith in or some great actor with a great chin because people sometimes say, Batman has to have a great chin. It's like, <laughs> okay. So the hype will not be as much as it is now. Yeah. So you, th you think the negative press has a positive effect on the, the movie then? <laughs> well, it does attract attention. And like you guys said, people, even those who are not fans of the movie or not like Bad Affleck, will go to see the movie just to get uh, themselves proven wrong. Even if people are hating on this news and stuff, they will go and see this movie just to see if Ben Affleck sucks. And maybe he will not suck. And it will be the greatest Batman portrayal to date. Yeah. Again, and people will be interested because <laughs> even the naysayers are going to go. The hardcore fans will go. The Superman fans will go. So basically, this is kind of a smart move because even bad press is better than no press. Maybe. Yeah, hopefully hopefully things will change when uh, when some stills, like some images come yeah. to light, you know, and they, they you get to see him in the suit and and maybe, you know, <clears throat> or maybe a first teaser trailer or something, something to, to get everybody on board. Uh, you know. Indeed, yeah. Because like with the reveal of Electro, I mean, the first footage official teaser of... Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah, uh, Jamie Foxx as Electro. We saw him in kind of in full makeup and electricity-wise... Didn't look that epic as I expected. I mean, he just looked like uh, electrical Mr. Freeze from Batman and Robin. Just... Yeah, he did look like Mr. Freeze. That's yeah. exactly what I thought. <laughs> yeah, and you're right. This Basically, when we see Ben Affleck in full suit and saying anything, we'll, we basically will know better. Yeah. And I just want to bring up one thing on the electro point, like, I've never even been a huge fan of Electro myself, but when in that footage we got, you know, when he's basically was saying, I'm Electro, I just thought, okay, I wasn't a huge fan of the Spectacular Spider-Man, but that didn't sound anywhere near as cool. It's just like, I'm Electro, compared to, I'm Electro! <laughs> you know, really, really badass like that. I'd, I'd probably suck at doing either voice, but... No, that's what that's what it felt like. It was like, oh, I'm bored. I'm electro. Then the other one, <laughs> I'm electro. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> you may have a future in voice acting, Rory. <laughs> I probably sounded nothing like him, but you get the idea. <laughs> oh, that hurt a little bit. <laughs> Uh, but... You basically became the electrical Batman. What? Okay, sorry, that was. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so anyway, Eric, it has been a pleasure having you on the podcast, and we can't oh, wait man. to talk to you again when Arkham Origins is released. Yeah, thank you, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. It was fun. It was indeed. So talk to you some other time. Yeah. Bye. Okay. Yeah, and all right, guys. Good luck. Oh, thank you very much. You too, guys. Good luck with the podcast and everything. Thank and I uh, can't wait to talk to you guys again. I'll talk to you later. Thank you. Bye. Well, that was a very fun interview, what you're saying. Yeah, I love that. Uh, really like how he entered us into the uh, discussion about Ben Affleck because he did bring up really good points that, you know, made me think about it. And basically, I'm even though I'm still pretty... Eh, still not sure about the whole Ben Affleck thing. Again, time will tell. Well, well, at least you're not hating on it. Well, you're not really hating on it. Oh, just a bit uncertain, really. Not hating, hating. Well, no, no. I'm, I'm just afraid that Ben Affleck is a great director and writer and not that amazing of, a, of an actor.
basically he's a director and writer first, actor fifth, because he did win Oscars for his movies, but he did not win Oscars for how he was acting in those movies. The way I've always seen it, always seen it. it's good to have, you know, writers, actors, directors, etc. in movies, but only as, you know, cameo, cameo appearances, yeah. yeah. Like Peter Jackson. And George Lucas, you know, uh, Baron Papanoid of Avenger the Sith. Yeah, even though, I, even though, speaking of Papanoid, I really, 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 really wanted in season three to hear his voice as Papanoid. Anyway, moving on to the next topic and sticking with Star Wars. There has been new episode seven news during the week, and I don't think it's a rumor. It, 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 the news is that it will be shot on film, not digital, with a 35mm camera to go for a 70s feel, just like the original trilogy. So what do you make of that, Dan? She made it out like, this is like the good old days, don't forget it, we're gonna go against what the prequels did. And basically, with this announcement, with a 35mm thing, it's basically to show that this is, please... OG fans, trust us, come back to us, we're not the prequels, watch us. That's Kennedy and Lucasfilm's statement. We're going to do it like it was once in the good old days. Because a lot of the older fans hate the prequels because they did use too much CGI, the acting was not on par with the originals, the characters were much wooden, as people say, even though some of the villains were really better. Because when you think about it, the stormtroopers in the originals suck. And the battle mm. droids and the separate droids from the Confederacy are really a great enemy because they really present the threat. The stormtroopers were a joke. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah. Hey, have you ever heard that one about a stormtrooper shit killing an enemy? No, I haven't either. And I have seen in even the Revenge of the Sith how those spider droids killed those clones on the beaches of Kashyyyk. Even that was pretty obvious. Yeah, I think the new Rebel series will portray Stormtroopers in a better light, because you have to remember at the start when the if the Empire was first formed, the Stormtroopers were like still clones, but then throughout the 20 years in between Sith and A New Hope, you know, it was mainly, you know, volunteers, and I mean, these people, they aren't properly trained, so to speak, so yeah. Actually, like, uh, they were all volunteers, but there were also people who were trained at academies. It was a mixture, really. Yeah, but again, it's a great move by Disney to have these news about going to the old days, you know, going to the traditional method of making Star Wars movies. That will get the viewers coming back. The old fans. Yeah, yeah. the old fans that got really disappointed and lost faith in the new Star Wars movies and didn't want to come back to the new things. So basically, this is a way for them to come back to loving the new movies. Yeah, I completely know what you mean, yeah. I think ever since, you know, episode 7 was announced, like, a lot of the original trilogy fans who haven't really been paying much attention to the community with the prequels and, you know, the only ongoing Star Wars fame being the Clone Wars, amazing TV show. Aside from that, they really didn't need to say a lot in the community because, you know, they didn't have anything new. Now that the sequel trilogy is coming, now they're back in a lot of forests. So moving on, I don't know if the bla this well, this technically is the last discussion topic. I'm not sure if anything it fits something you want to talk about, but I'll talk about it because it's fairly important for anim fans and we need to bring up a few more anim topics here and there. Um but there has been a trailer recently, well the Japanese the trailer anyway, for an upcoming Pokemon Origins. TV special. Now, I haven't been paying a lot of attention to Pokemon in the last while, even before this podcast, really, because, you know, I've always been a fan of the original series, the Hoenn series, and the Sinnoh series, but then I was ad eagerly anticipating the newest series, which came out, like, one or two years ago, in with English voices, obviously, with, you know, non the not-Japanese version, and it basically came out and after about 20 episodes maybe 30 I gave up on it and the, really I kind of forced myself to watch most of those episodes because after four or five of them I was just fed up with that uh, new series that new series being 
the one that they really could never decide on the actual name for, Best Wishes, aka Black and White, because, you know, got called both a lot of times, and yeah, I just like pretty much gave up on that, but uh, now they have this announcement of the Pokemon Origins special, and I'm interested did in I mean I have most of the original Pokemon games for the Game Boy Advance and I remember when I was very young and really had nothing else to do I played them pretty much every day um, and they're going to be using the characters from those games which should be interesting to see. The trailer itself was very nice as well I think we saw some of the characters we did actually get to know as well in the actual anim Pokemon anime itself as well, like the first Oak, Brock and Gary Oak, I think we saw all of them in the trailer, as well as some of the video game characters like Red and all that. Uh, well, we still don't have official confirmation. I think that they're going to be using those exact names, but um, yeah, I'm interested in seeing where it goes with this, um, so with Pokemon Origin Special, it's definitely something I'm going to be keeping an eye out for, for more information on. But yeah, it should be good. I'm in, I'm definitely very excited about it. It's the first time I've been excited for anything Pokemon related really ever since Black and White was the the first day that Black and White was coming out, and I was disappointed that day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Okay. Is it a TV series or is it a TV special? Why? I think it. I think it's a special, and if it gets very well received, they're going to make it into a series. That's why I've heard. Ah, I didn't like the trailer. It was really sloppy, and it's not the way I can see a trailer to hype people. It was basically long scenes, long slow music. It tried to be epic, but it just. I get what you're saying, Dan. Think how Clone Wars episode trailers are cut. I mean, think of the season one trailer or the season five trailer, how they're cut. They're all fast-paced. They really get you hyped. So on that note, <laughs> yeah. moving on to our weekly Name That Franchise and Geekly Trivia question. So again, we this first off, it will be Name That Franchise. So if you can't remember what it is, we're basically going to tell you a quote. And you have to guess what franchise it's from, and if you can guess exactly who says it, and well, if it's a movie series, TV series, video game, etc., if you can name exactly which one it is of the specific releases, then even more picks for that. But so here is this week's name that franchise. We both know that I now have to kill you. You'll just have to imagine the fire. Uh, moving on to the Geekly Trivia question, uh, which Harry Potter actress is known for arriving last minute to an addition and tripping into a table in front of the director David Yates? So obviously it's from one of the later Harry Potter films because David Yates wasn't the director of the first. So if you think you know the answer to either name that franchise or Geekly Trivia question, be sure to leave the answers that you think on either the comments on the YouTube link or our Facebook page. 